The simple thing about exercise is that if you do it, you're going to feel better. If you don't, you won't. And really, it's that simple. The difficult bit is being motivated to actually get out of bed half an hour earlier or whatever, what time of day you choose to do it, and actually do it. So what I've often found when people have a little bit of difficulty motivating themselves, what I've often found helps is to basically take it in steps. If you know you're going to exercise before you go to work, there's no point trying to do yoga in front of a TV at 6.30 in the morning. Forget it. It's simply not going to work. What helps, though, is getting into a yoga class, or if it's a matter of getting down to the gym, actually going down to the gym. Doing this stuff at home, the first time the phone rings, you're going to be diverted. So forget it. It's really a waste of effort if you've been out of exercise for a while. Once you're back into it, yes, of course, then you can perhaps use that kind of a, um, a method. But for the moment, when you're just really starting to get back in, the ideal way to do it is to say, okay, I'm going to get up early. Now that's my main goal. I'm going to get up early, eat something very, very light, and then just get myself to the studio, whether it's a fitness studio or a yoga studio or a gym, whatever. Take it in steps. So you've got your goal. First get up, then get some very light food in, and then get wherever it is you're going to go. Now this is if you're doing it first thing in the mornings. In other words, don't think about the hour and 20 minutes of yoga, and don't think about the however many circuits you're going to be doing. Just get yourself to the location. And when you're starting out, if you don't do a full session, it's not the end of the world. As you move along, that's obviously a desirable goal, but if you only want to do 50% of it, that's actually acceptable while you're starting out. Because the ideal with all forms of fitness is to work around any limitations that you have. So if you've got a little bit of an injury in your foot, okay, fine. Avoid using your foot where you can. Just do upper body work. Or if you've got, um, if you've got a lung situation, which really does mean that you can only work out for 10 minutes, then that's absolutely fine. You work out for 10 minutes. And one of the things I have to tell my clients many, many times is it's okay if you don't enjoy it. Now I know that might sound a little odd, but actually as you're starting out, it is okay if this is not something which is a whole bundle of laughs for you. And the reason I say that is that as you start to do it more, then you will become more acclimatized to it and it'll actually start to be something which you're much more comfortable with and it'll even become part of a regular regime. But initially, all you need to worry about is just getting to the geographical location and walking through that door. Now that's the first step. Eventually you're going to be doing the full class, hopefully after one or two, one or two attempts. Maybe even the first attempt, and that's wonderful if you can. But once you start doing the class, then you can start refining it. Even in the most basic yoga class, you can actually make it much more strenuous by it sounds like someone's been taken to the hospital here. Hang on a minute. There we go. Okay. Even in the most strenuous, you know, in the, even in the most basic yoga class, you can actually add a little stress to it by adding tension into some of the moves and turn it into a much more extreme class. It's really up to you how you work with things like yoga and some other, some other forms such as Tai Chi and various others. Obviously, one of, the, um, one of the most helpful systems, which people often overlook, is swimming. Now, here in Canada, we're very lucky. Many of the municipal halls or rec centers, whatever, are very heavily subsidized. It's very cheap to go swimming. They've also got really good gym facilities, most of them. So, think about these as options. Even if you cannot get into a swimming pool, there's always walking. I have a client who I saw for about three months um, maybe once a month. He then called me up and said he was coming in, just wanted to drop by. And I came into my office one day and there's this chap waiting in a waiting room. And he looked kind of familiar, but I couldn't place him. And then I realized it was him. I quite literally did not recognize him. He'd lost something like 45, maybe 50 pounds in the course of two or three months of, of his exercise. Now, that's a lot to lose. It's a very steady rate of three or four pounds a week. And that's bordering on too much. You know, two pounds a week would be 
perfectly acceptable if one's looking for a sort of sensible weight loss project. However, he did it through the very simple expedient of making sure he walked However, he did it through the very simple expedient of making sure he took a walk every single day, rain or shine, for a minimum of 45 minutes. Usually he'd make it an hour. At weekends, he'd sometimes go around Stanley Park, so it's two hours, two and a half hours. Sometimes. Now, the simple process of walking, the human body's meant to move in that manner. The simple process of walking is a really good workout. It works out the entire body, it doesn't provide excessive stress. In other words, there's not any high impact through the feet or knees, anything like that. And it's, it's basically what we were built to do. So exercise of that sort is perfectly acceptable as long as you genuinely commit to it. And the ideal is that if you're going to go down there and do that, turn your cell phone, cell phone off, take that hour's walk or 45 minutes walk for yourself. Absolutely for yourself. Maybe put on some music. Ideally, relatively calm music. Even things like music can affect the state. In fact, especially things like music can affect the state of mind. But there is an element to this which is often underplayed and, and people discount it rather swiftly. And that is that this is ritual. This is time for yourself. Now that ritual is important. I sometimes say to my clients, you humans need ritual. And what I want you to think of which is a very uh, sound method of, of kind of judging whether things are in sync for you, if your life's working for you. Think of a, a Mercedes-Benz symbol, right, the circle. Within that circle, there's the three-pointed star. It's actually a very nice logo. And every time you see it, just consider this. One of those divisions, one of those segments, represents your work and security. Another represents family and relationships. And the third represents yourself. Now, ideally in your life, you should allow yourself to have an equal balance between each of those three sections, work and security, family and relationships, and yourself. Now, what many people do, and I see this especially amongst the mothers that, that, I, that I work with, they allow the self to get sort of squeezed down and down. And there's a lot of family there, and there's a, sometimes a lot of work there, but there's not too much of themselves left with the guys, especially very motivated, very alpha guys. Work becomes, instead of this 60 degree angle, it starts to get right out there and it starts to take over. It starts to push the relationship and it starts to push the self. Now you can do that, but it's going to get you. It's going to get you eventually. Ideally you want to keep all three in balance. You could get to the stage when you're 75 years old and unable to work anymore and 75 or 80, my father's 80, he still does a day's work every day. Now, let's just say you were 80 and you've worked really, really, really hard, that's wonderful, you've achieved a whole lot, and then you suddenly find you're not working and you look around, and actually, what have you got left? Where is the family? What's the relationships like? And how much of yourself is there left after, after you take the work aspect away? And equally, actually, it can be said of the whole family and relationships thing. If you're so dedicated to your family that the work goes to pieces and, and you give up yourself, you get sort of the mother-victim complex or the father who just gives everything down, everything down, everything down. Eventually, there's, there's a, a, a price to pay for that. So what I'd like you to try and do, just over a little period, each time you see a Mercedes, each time you see that sign, that three-pointed sign, have a look at it and ask yourself if your life is really in balance. Now one of the best things you can do to support the self is the exercise. It gives you that little bit of ritual time of your own. It helps you physically feel better. And the moment you physically feel better, inevitably, you feel better emotionally.